Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT Podcast. We are back. We got our, our monthly guest, David Thompson. He's in the building, aka Mr. Basketball, WNBA, NBA, basketball aficionado. I don't know many people that love basketball as much as David Thompson, which is why we keep having him on. He knows other sports, but we we know basketball that master in that. How you doing today? I'm good, man. I mean, I, I say everybody loves ball. I'm not, I'm not the only person that loves ball, but I'm glad that you uh you think of me in that that light. But it's just always a glad, it's always a pleasure to be on. I'm glad to be here. Of course, of course. So we haven't been able, we weren't able to hop on before the playoffs happened. I was doing a little hiatus and whatnot. So the playoffs are in full swing. Any thoughts, any issues with Asa Wilson getting third place in the MVP? So Twitter went, WBA Twitter went crazy when it happened. I want your thoughts on how the award went down. I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad that Stewie won. Like, honestly, like, between her, AT, and Asia, they all had strong cases. Um, I think that one fourth-place vote for Asia was crazy. Like, whoever casted that one fourth-place vote, like, they should be looked into. But outside of that, I think it played out. Because in reality, I think AT had the most first-place votes. So it was like People thought AT was doing her thing. It's just a culmination of how, you know, the whole system works. So, I mean, my whole remedy to that is, like, yo, if you don't get regular season MVP, get the finals MVP. And I think, you know, she's only three games away from that. So, she's doing what she got to do. But between the three of them, and even Nafisa Kalia, like, Nafisa, Nafisa finished fourth. Like, she already went over to Europe and, like, got an MVP for, like, a little, like, like mini tournament they played in. So, it's like, I feel like everybody at the top of the, the, the WNBA MVP, like, like kind of, like, forecast they all deserve that like recognition like between her ac uh stewie and asia like they all was phenomenal this season like and then you know if you don't get in regular season like asia will share three consecutive games of 30 points in the playoffs they talk about they want the league to grow and like how they want people to pay attention everybody watching so that's all you can ask for right now it's like you see six hundred thousand nine hundred thousand like you know it's like years per game before the finals so you know the finals will hit at least hopefully at least a million 1.5 but it's like as long as people watching the game like i'm, I'm happy for it all yeah, that's, I think that's the other thing that people are like aren't recognizing in it. You have three, four viable, legitimate candidates for MVP. Like, that's where the game of the WMA is at. Like, it's four people that literally could have got MVP, and it's literally conversation. I thought it was beautiful. It's conversation all over Twitter of people back and forth arguing. It should have been Asia. It should have been AT. That's only going to grow the sport. That's only getting more attention. Oh, yeah. I think okay. So I think it was cool. I would have put Asia and probably had AT second, but that's just me. Honestly, Stewie deserved it. It's my oh, regular season. He deserves it. I just per preference, I'm giving it to Asia and the AT having her triple double season. I, yeah. She got the most first place vote. So it's it, different. It's different. But I don't get a vote as of yet. I'm speaking at one of these. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like if the Liberty make the final, I feel like Asia and Stewie got the opportunity to be like what Bird and Magic were for the NBA. So it's like if y'all can get into a groove of like y'all doing this for the next three, four, five years, grow the sport. Like, I mean, granted, it's hard to go back to the finals as often as that. But like where it is situated right now, like AT and, and Asia, like they, I mean, I'm sorry, Brianna and Asia really have the opportunity to be like the Bird and Magic of the W. I completely, I can see that for the next four or five years, especially how their teams are set up. Definitely can see that happening. So, do you see the Liberty actually finishing it next game and going to the finals, or you think it's going to Connecticut or pushing another game? I mean, as much as I want to see like a rematch of Connecticut Vegas, like I like Connecticut more than I like New York, but it's it's I think New York has it. Like between, because honestly, the tough part is like New York is almost like a carbon copy of Vegas, where it's like Laney. I look at Benajah Laney. She's almost like the the clone of like uh like like Jackie, like Jackie Young, and and Benajah, Like they're kind of like like the counterparts. So it's like yo, she had what twenty this game. Like she's had a pretty solid playoff run so far. Like Stewie's been shaky. Honestly, if Anesco's going and Laney's going, it's a toss up because it's like yo, some nights Stewie gonna be great, some nights John Quell gonna be great. So it's like damn, you got four people that can consistently kind of like you know. Go off and do what they got to do is tough. But in the same breath, Vegas got that same opportunity where it's like, yo, some nights it's Asia, some nights it was Chelsea. I think last night had 23, 5, and 8. So it's like, all right, Chelsea did her part. 
And then Kelsey, Kelsey's always a bomb when he's waiting to die. And he, honestly, I feel like Kelsey's kind of sacrificed the most. But I feel like Kelsey could easily go off at 30 every night if she wanted to. But it's like, yo, I understand team, I understand concept. So it's like, all right, you got Asia, you got Pinky, you got Chelsea, and then you still got Jack Young. And I mean, like, as much as I wish Candace was healthy, like, even when they acquired Candace, I'm like, they don't really need Candace. They went to the championship and won it all without her. So it's like, Candace was just like house money. I think uh, Alicia Clark has been like a good, like, six man, like, good, like, but like, you know, but the Ace has really been six, seven deep all season. So being that they six seven deep, and we talked about this before when he was having that little bit of slump, a little bit of, I guess he wasn't focused. We're previewing, let's say Liberty Aces are in it. How do you see that going? Of course, it's tough because the Aces, uh, Liberty is so deep, and that's what's been a problem all year. It's like yo, the, the Liberty second unit. Sometimes it's uh Marnie Johannes. This uh, is Brianna Stewart, Taylor Thornton. That's because no BMW Sanders, whoever it's like, yo, like it's so many, like, like they, they really run like nine, 10 deep. So it's tough to play six deep against nine deep because you just don't have the manpower and the energy to go. Um, I mean, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be a testament to Becky's coaching. It's going to be a testament to how much them players want it. Like, obviously I want the Aces to win, but like, like New York ain't, ain't nothing to fool with. Like they really set up to kind of be the dogs for a little bit. Yeah. I'm very intrigued. That's only my concern when I, I look at the series coming up is, the Liberty are way deeper, like way deeper. And I've we've seen it through multiple times throughout the year. Starters might not be playing well. Sabrina, she a little off. Stewie's a little off. And then that bench come in and it's in waves, in waves. They get, I, went, I remember the game that we went to was the Sparks game. Liberty not playing that well. Sparks, they giving them room. They, they look like they doing something. And then um, what's her name? 31 off the bench. Um, Dostin, Stephanie Dostin. Stephanie comes yeah. in like four threes in the fourth quarter. Back. And my, she, she was hurt. 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 She was really She deep. It's not like, no, like the Aces are really six deep. The Liberty are ten. They have a, a, a starting unit and a bench unit that can run you off the floor either way. So it's tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah. I'm looking at them like she – Four straight threes in the fourth quarter, a couple of blocks. Then she sat down, and then Stewie came in and finished out the game with, like, eight straight, and Sabrina hit a corner three, and then Laney hit a three. I'm like, Thornton came in, had three big threes in the third quarter. I'm like, hey, they deep. They are, they are super deep. So I'm very intrigued to see how that series goes. Hopefully, barring schedule, once the finals start, a couple games in, we got to get you on, give you a – Analysis on what you're watching so far again, Mr. Basketball. So, you break me out. I'm just a, I'm a fan at the end of the day. I feel like there's so many people that have given so much to this game, and so many people like yourself that kind of pay attention to the, to the game in the same capacity that I do. It's like, bro, we ain't doing nothing different than we would have been doing 10, 15 years ago. We just love the game. So, it's like, I mean, I think the Aces got time off until the eighth. I know the Liberty and Connecticut play again on Sunday. So, it's make or break. Like, if, if Liberty really want to break and some rest. They got to win on Sunday. If not, keep going. But it's like, hey, all I know is my, my, my team in Vegas, they resting. So I ain't, I ain't mad about that. But it's like as the W finals is starting, preseason for the NBA is next week. October 5th, you got some Abu Dhabi action between Dallas. I'm not I'm trying to remember who they're playing, but I know Dallas is definitely out there. And I think Dallas is going from Abu Dhabi to Spain. So it's like it's a lot for them preseason. So I'm like, I'm not even going to be surprised if I see the regular season start and Dallas get off to a slow start. But to do all that traveling preseason, and it's still got to go back. Mind you, Dallas had to do their media day yesterday because everybody, for the most part, is going on Monday. Like, it's going to be like, I think, like, 16 or 17 teams that's going on Monday. But Dallas didn't get that chance because they got to go to Abu Dhabi. So it's like, yo, we got to fly to Abu Dhabi, fly to Spain, come back to Dallas and be ready for the preseason and then be ready for the season. So it's like... I know Luca's ready to go because of the like the FIBA basketball and whatnot, but it's like I'm not really putting too much pressure on Dallas to start the season because it's like they're gonna be tired from you know the off season. So hey, again, this is why we have you on the show because nobody is talking about that aspect of Dallas having to go Abu Dhabi, Spain. Like I we mentioned it, and Luca was happy that he's gonna be able to go play in Spain and this, that, and third. But in regards of how they start off in the season. 
that's something to be very mindful of. They could start off you talking about three and six, and then of course you're going, oh, they not good. Da, 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 da. Kyrie, Luca, can it work together? We're gonna see all those reports, and people gonna forget that they was at Abu Dhabi in Spain. That's a lot of travel. That's a lot of travel, bro. And back to Dallas. And speaking of it, you, like you said, most start on front on Monday. Sorry, reports. James Harden is not going to be in camp on Monday. Do you think? <laughs> do you think he gets traded actually before the beginning of the season? Or are we going to actually see James Harden back in a Philly uniform? I don't think he gets traded because the market for him, like nobody's looking for James Harden. Like, James Harden has depreciated his own value by the way he's kind of been maneuvering. It's like, mind you, like, it's people who've been, been saying, it's like, yo, like, Martin gave you everything in Houston. You got what you wanted in Brooklyn. Like, you got what you wanted in Philly. Like, granted, mind you, I don't know the details of the uh, the promises that Maury might have made him or the whole liar thing. But it's like, in a professional space, it's like, yo, you handle your business tighter than that. You shouldn't be in a club putting on the on the, the display in the club. Daryl Maury's a liar. That's that's childish, bro. That's childish. Like, you, you're selling somebody else's reputation, especially... You can't sully nobody's reputation if they paid you before. Like, Daryl Morey was responsible for you getting paid in Houston. Like, even if you have a disagreement now in, in, in Philly, there should be more respect because this man has made you a millionaire many times over. Sit down. Okay. And mind you, like, that is not an easy business. You feel me? Like, it's hard to facilitate for a player that's getting as much bread as James Harden. It's hard to either pay you that much. Mind you. Be patient, James. The new salary cap or the new CBA is coming around. It's like it's like there's so many reasons to be patient. I think he's just lost sight of like the bigger picture, and it's like he also has to take accountability because it's like yo, and B did his part last year, and B was MVP. It's like you had 40 game one of the the West or the Eastern Conference Finals and he fell off. So it's like you've got to at a certain point in time, it has to be James Harden's fault, and you can't be blaming everybody a whole career. And you know, I think because like mind you, I feel like everybody's saying that. everybody's like yo, he's really close. To kind of being out the leads. So it's like, if Philly is where you at right now, make the best of Philly because you can't force your way out of three, four organization. Mind you, OKC, he ain't forced as well. He got traded or he got moved just because of what they was doing. So, all right, you get a pass for that. But Brooklyn, Houston with Chris Paul. You had Chris Paul in your team, dog. Y'all was up on the Warriors. Y'all was up. It wasn't even like I was down. Y'all was up. So it's like, now this is really like, yo, this is on you, James. So it's like he put himself in that position, but it's like, yo, at the end of the day, you're not going to get no more leeway. And even I think like KG and, and Paul Pierce were saying the other day, like, yo, you only get too many opportunities to change the situation. You've changed the situation enough, and it's always been better every time. So it's like, yo, at a certain point, it's really you. Yeah, I think somebody got to go play for him since he's in the club. DJ need to play man in the mirror because it's not – it's not a lot of self-reflection that James is doing where he's understanding, hey, honestly, if you did your part, uh, again, we don't know what the, the promise was, but if Daryl Morey promised you this big contract, you didn't play well in the playoffs again. So you put him in a position where he may want to pay you, but I can't pay you. How am I going to make that make sense to the fans and to my boss, the owner of Philly? Like, yeah, I promised him this money. He didn't play well, but I promised him the money. Like James in any any other any other space of this world, if you don't perform, they can't get like, like I don't think you know how this works. I get traded before the season, but I was reading a couple different articles that you know Drew Holiday might be able to help facilitate in a trade to get in him to LA where he want to go to the Clippers because Portland isn't keeping Drew. What I'd rather, I'd rather Drew in L.A. than James. Oh, I would love Drew in L.A. because a couple of trades I saw was that Drew would be in L.A. with Russ. So Drew, Russ, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard. And Westbrook. I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Outside of the Clippers, where do you see possibly like Drew could go like the best fit? Because I see Clippers. I even see Knicks might get in the mix. Miami, since they lost out on Dane. I've seen the same names. I mean, if Miami's really serious about trying to stay in the title contention, like Kyle Lowry, which I'll pay him. I was looking at the, the, the Kyle Lowry, I think he gets like 29 and a half million a year. Drew gets about like 36. So like they could move them contracts. Like you might Miami has gonna have to give a little bit more to make the, the money even out. But it's like that's your closest bet to mind you. Kyle, Kyle Lowry did not perform at all 
with the expectation. But Kyle Lowry was supposed to come in and be an uh, uh, 18 and 7 guy, 18.7 assists consistently. Kyle Lowry got benched in Miami, bro. Got benched. So it's like, yo, if the money's close and we can give you some future assets, Miami got a. I feel like Miami is so. They believe in their culture so much and their ability to draft and kind of develop folks that they forget some people are already talented. You don't have to teach Drew Holiday how to play basketball, dog. Let him come in with Jimmy. Let him come in with Bam. Even if whatever happens with Tyler Harrow, you got to move him, whatever. It's like, yo, Jimmy, Bam, Drew? I was already at the finals with Jimmy and Bam. So if Drew come in the mix, who's already a champion, but it's, I don't know if they see it that way, but it's like, I, I mean, if I was Miami, I would be chomping at the bit. I don't think New York makes a move because it's like they're not going to move Brunson for him. Randall is a heavy ticket to pay, and Randall also plays the four, so he's not going to go to Portland. You know, it's, it's it's a lot. I feel like it's a couple teams that really make sense. I think Miami is definitely one of them. Obviously, a couple other markets, but it's like, yeah, Miami is very serious about trying to sit his mind to you. What is better? Like, if you uh, – Dame, if Dame, Giannis pick and roll, who's guarding the game, Giannis pick and roll? And even if Giannis, I mean, even if Dame is off the ball, because Giannis handles the ball. It's like if Giannis is breaking down people, if even if it's the Giannis, Brook pick and roll, and Dame is in the corner, it's just so much more exact. It's different now. So it's like Milwaukee's good, but it's like, yo, if Miami's trying to keep up, if Boston's trying to keep up, if I'm Boston, I'm like, yo, is White worth a, a holiday? Is Brogdon worth a holiday? Or is like anything we got worth a holiday? Because it's like, you lost Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart was y'all really y'all like y'all leader. So it's like, like who is really going to be that kind of like you know? Mind you, Tatum is a world class player. Brown coming off the contract, world class player. But it's like who is y'all leader? Who is y'all kind of person? All right, we manage in possessions now with five six minutes left in the game. Who's MJ Smart? Drew Holiday could do that. So Drew will be perfect for both teams, but specifically Boston. You get that defensive dog aspect back with Drew. I mean, they, you know, they're trying to sell us on Derek White being a top defensive player. He's good, but if I see them in a, a playoff series, Bucks, Celtics, Dame is eating very, very much. Dame, in Dame in a ISO. Dame in a ISO. He don't even know screen. Dame and Derek White. He's pulling from hat. He's pulling from the logo. This makes it. This makes it 30 times easier for Giannis. Giannis last season had the highest usage rate. You got Dame now. You don't have to have the highest usage rate. You don't have to. And I think that high. But well, Giannis saving his energy is still going to be 30 and 12. It's like if you're getting 20, 30 and 12 and doing everything, if Dame doing the hard part, head down to the basket, head down to the basket. Like Giannis' life is not hard. It's like, mind you, Middleton, he's the biggest, like, X factor because it's like his health since the injury. But if, if Middleton has the same like trajectory back that Clay Thompson had, because Clay Thompson took some time to get back. It's my mind you different injuries, but it's like yo, if if Chris Middleton got kind of had that forward progress that Clay Thompson had, Chris, you don't gotta get 25 no more. 18, 16, 17, Dame got 30, Giannis got 30, you got 16. Brooke is pretty good. And, yeah, Brooke, and, like Brooke, and and Bobby coming off the FIBA, everybody coming off the FIBA is always better. So it's like this year, look at Mikel, look at Bobby, look at Jalen. Like all them dudes, look at Ant. All them FIBA guys is about to have like that. If y'all don't make at least second team, come on now. Come on. I could definitely see that. You mentioned Bobby. You mentioned Brooke. You got Brooke's brother coming off the bench, Robin Lopez. So that's giving you the defensive aspect still. Malik Beasy probably has a bounce back season here with not as much pressure. It's sad. I don't believe in Malik. I'm hoping. I'm hoping for his sake. Being in this system with Dane, Giannis, Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez stretching it out. He got enough three. open looks. He got enough open looks that he shoot at, at least 38 percent. But I don't know. I'm not, I'm not. I've never been crazy about him. That has oh, no. Anybody that gets my... caught up with Larissa Pippen, I feel like y'all not focused on a game. That's that's just my take. <laughs> I completely agree on that front. I already knew how that was going with the for the Lakers. I already saw how that was going. Based off the trade, everything that we just were talking, do you feel the Bucks overall though are the favorite to win the championship? I think it's Boston and them. Like honestly, because Boston's, I mean. 
The only because mind you, I'm not giving Milwaukee the green light because it's like new coach. Like Adrian Griffin got to still kind of figure that out and kind of like he has to learn personalities, implement his system. So it's like it's not going to be super smooth. Boston at least still got Joe Mazzulla going in the year two, and their primary focal points coming back. It's like yes, you lost, you know, Grant Williams, but you still got Robert Williams. You know, Danil Gallinari might help in some capacity. Porzingis is going to help us in capacity, but Brogdon, Tatum, Brown, and and your second year coach. So I might have Boston a little bit higher than them. After Milwaukee, I don't think New York is that good. I don't think Cleveland is that good. You know, so Miami, maybe Miami's always like, come on, you. Miami made the finals in eight seeds. I don't know if their regular season is better, but I don't know when it matters. Like, they're going to be lingering around. But it's like Milwaukee really set up to kind of just kind of just, all right, get out the way, get out the way. So they really kind of have that pressure of just performing at the level that it's supposed to. But, uh, the East is a little murky, but I do see Boston and Milwaukee kind of being at the top of it. Oh, I don't see anybody else competing. Even if the outside looking is Miami, everybody else, there's no discussion. Like, y'all can just figure it out. Y'all can just try to have the best season possible, as many regular season wins, whatever you could do, get your stats. But nobody else in the East, barring injury, they not beating Milwaukee or Boston in a seven-game series. Knicks ain't got no. it. Brooklyn ain't got it. No, it's y'all all fighting for four through four through twelve. That's that's what y'all fighting for. And it's really just for like base value. It's really to have a seating because it's like at the end of the day, I'm not gonna be able to kind of maneuver how these guys maneuver in the both season. So I really don't mean too much. How you see it going down in the West? Because uh, Phoenix, they got rid of Aiton to the Blazers, but they got back Nurkic. They got back some depth because, you know, that was the issue with them. They got, they got a got lot of depth. Defense. A lot of depth. But my biggest thing is, like, yo, like, teams only function if people want to be there. So Aiden not being there is better for them. Like, Aiden, whatever happened with Aiden in the organization, you could tell, like, he wasn't really, like, it wasn't really the same vibe. So it was like, all right, mind you, you got a lot of pieces you got to figure out, but it's like at least everybody is new and wants to be there. And Frank Vogel is not Monty Williams. Frank Vogel is only at this point, what, four years removed from a championship? So he's seen it. He's done it. He's done it with the best of talent because LeBron and AD, if I could coach them, I could coach KD. I could coach a book. So I like Vogel being that, that his first year there. Um, Denver, I think the loss of Jeff Green and Brown is bigger than people are talking about. It's like those people were there for your championship. If they're not there now, it's like who's gonna do more? Like Braun, like Braun gotta do more. I have the utmost faith in Aaron Gordon. I think Aaron Gordon is gonna have like I think he should be considered for most improved. Because like yo, that confidence in my dream. I like Aaron Gordon because it's like yo, we don't gotta run a set. If I see a mismatch, dive into the basket. I'm putting my mind you, that was before he got the chip. So th- those things during the finals, it was like I think like game two or game three. Fucking Tyler, well, Tyler wasn't playing, but it's like, yo, somebody smaller in front of me in front of the basket, I'm diving, mm, I'm diving. Like, so it's like he put that pressure on me. He, he's smart enough. So I think him having that championship confidence, I'm not expecting anything from Jokic until after All Star break. So when you win the championship, you party all summer. I'm not going to be naive about it. So even if Jokic needs some time to get right, I know he already know how to function at the highest. Don't expect nothing from Jokic till February. Murray, year, what, two, three after being healthy, Murray going to be sharper. But at the same time, it's like losing Jeff Green, losing Brown, Brown going to be tough. So we got to see who's ready to really play ball. Hopefully Porter's a year better. Hopefully, you know, Mike Malone and the whole group is a little bit better. So I still see them, like, as, like, one one or two. It's just like at the end of the day, you got Golden State, you know, you got L.A. Chris Paul should start. Because it's been conversation back and forth if Chris Paul is going to start on that roster. I mean, I think somebody made the point that the Warriors had a turnover problem before. Like, like over the last five, six years, the Warriors have had, like, a turnover problem. Chris Paul ain't turning the ball over. So even if you put Steph back in the two spots, Steph could function as a two. The gravity is going to function the same way. The ball movement is going to function the same way. But it's like, if Steph's running around, no matter if Chris Paul got the ball, He's focusing on Steph. You got to stop him from the ball. And even if he's focused on Steph, where's Clay? Where's Draymond? It's like their issue has always been their big. They need, like, 
I was shocked that they didn't really sign Dwight Howard. So I'm like, yo, why? Why not sign Dwight? I mean, Rudy Rudy Gay is a good big body, but it's like he's still six eight. You need somebody who's seven foot to go get all the boards and do all the dirty shit. Mind you, I love Kevon Looney. Like I love what y'all got, but y'all don't got no big. So it's like I was shocked that they passed on that. But it's like everything else in Golden State. We've seen what it's been since 2014 and now. Steph, he's still died his, his career. So it's like I'm not gonna be surprised if I see Steph average 36 and six for the year. Not gonna shock me. So it's just figuring out the other parts around it. And it's like outside of the basketball part, I think this is the last uh like I think Kerr and Clay need new deals done. So it's like, all right, are y'all coming long term to that? Or is this about to be like, all right, one last run and then I'll pivot? You already know the vibes. If you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Bitch mob ENT. We out. Make sure that you subscribe, like this, share this. Follow us on all socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Peace.